If you put a computer in front of an average person, they'd know what it was. But if you took it apart and if you said to them, you know that this was a computer before, but can you tell me what it is about these parts that give it the properties that you and I attribute to a computer? They wouldn't have a clue. So the systems medicine approach really recognizes for the first time that the individual components, we'll just say the molecular components, DNA and other things, can't tell you really what that individual is about. And that's the premise of systems medicine, is that the summation of the parts produce the properties that we call life and that we call people. is this whole concept of systems medicine. This is something that I really have made um, a defining element of what we do at the medical center. And so it is woven into almost everything that we do, educationally, investigationally, but also how we are thinking about clinical care. We just are able now to have brought all the tools together as an initial approach to do the most sophisticated evaluation, diagnostic and prognostic, and ultimately treatment decisions, representing every piece of data that might be relevant to every patient. I think cancer is an outstanding example of why we need to approach human health from a systems perspective. You have to layer in the fact that over the past 40 years, there has been an absolute explosion in the understanding of the molecular features that describe and characterize various types of cancers. And we typically use only a t the tiniest fraction of that knowledge. I think that's wrong. At Georgetown, we have decided to move forward with a systems medicine platform known as the Georgetown Database of Cancer. It's known as GDOC. And what we're gonna do is very simple. We're going to say what were the molecular features and or the clinical features that were associated most closely with the group of people who did well and the group of people whose cancers relapsed and what can we learn about it. We've been talking about this concept of personalized medicine for many years. What's different now is we can measure the chaos. We've said in the past that cancer is just too confusing. What's different today is that we can embrace the complexity. We can measure all the different pathways that are broken or distorted. We can compare them from the normal tissue to the cancer tissue and the host response that's part of the interaction. With the ability of computers to help us to analyze these things and, and generate a pattern out of all of these changes, then we can be much more successful at figuring out the patterns that are related to cancer and the patterns that are related to response to a different therapy. So if you have an abnormality X, you want to treat it with drug Y. You don't want to just treat with generic therapies that will treat most patients and give them the most best response. You want to actually focus on this person's tumor and treat accordingly. If you think about it, you look under the hood of your car, I'll bet you you could pull three or four wires and that baby would still run but there might be one wire that you pull and nothing will run. And that's the idea behind this, is that if we can figure out what are the driving mutations, really the ones that are in command, then our medicine development gets much more rapid, much more effective, and by understanding that, measuring it, it will allow us to sort patients into the important groups that they are. Divide and conquer will be the answer, and we can do it today. What systems medicine is designed to do is to take information, which already is out there, to begin connecting those pieces of information into a rational story that becomes knowledge, and to turn that knowledge then into the power to make a difference in people's lives. Georgetown is in a perfect position, not just because of our geographical location, because of our law center, our public policy institute, on our Kennedy Institute of Ethics. We have the multidisciplinary talent to actually make systems medicine understandable. So it is my intent that 
systems medicine will transform the way we practice medicine and all that we have been doing over the last several years is laying each stone in that road and I think we are clearly on track for the adoption of this new paradigm.